Hey, what's up? How is it going? Welcome to my 1 to 99 runecrafting guide. I'll be including everything you need to know, including lava runecrafting and blood and soul runes, which are the new runes you can actually craft. I've even, you know, shown a clip of wrath runes, but it's actually cheaper than the other runes to craft, so it's not worth it. And feel free to give the video a like if it did help you out, and actually check out all my other 99s. I posted every single one. Let's get into it, guys. Alright, so first off, going over the runes, of course, there's the air the mines and you know just all the basic four elements with the body and then it gradually just goes up tier with cosmic being at 27 runecrafting mainly used for enchanting spells and then chaos runes at 35 med tier combat spell nature runes alchemy law runes teleport uh, yeah i'm not going to go over every single rune but you get the point and there is the combination rune so the bottom right uh column there's you know mist smoke lava all these things are really good for certain things like mud ruin if you're trying to actually pk and snare someone it takes a water and a earth ruin so you could save an inventory spot and yeah just a little clutch things like that i'll actually be showing you guys how to make these later on in the video along with the money making method one last thing to note is the actual wrath ruin which just came in the game about a month ago as of the recording of this video and yeah it's 95 magic for the top tier spell it's like 50s it's really op but yeah Alright, so moving on to the actual items you will need, pure essence of course, you could use the regular rune essence, especially if you're like an Iron Man, but yeah, the pure essence is actually cheaper by half the price, and of course you could bring a black pickaxe for the abyss, and of course you're gonna need teleports, a dueling ring with the glory, binding necklaces if you're trying to make lava runes or combination runes, I'll actually, you know, go over that later, a black pick for the abyss, you could use a mithril, but anything over that is like starting to weigh a lot, and it's gonna weigh down your energy over time. Make sure you guys wear a tiara instead of actually bring a talisman. I bet you there's some noobs out there still doing that. I would also highly recommend getting a rune pouch very soon in your runescape career. It costs like 1.2 mil, but it's like 3 mil if you buy the emblems from the GE. What you want to do is go to emblem space area CC. Man, they should pay me for a promotion. But uh, yeah, you actually want to go through a middleman, or you could trust it. You could trust someone, but you know, watch out. There is scammers. But yeah, then you'll just actually buy a tier seven off them for like 900k. It's pretty cheap. And if you don't know, a rune pouch actually holds three slots of runes, so it's just saving you two inventory spots, which is pretty good for you know skilling or PKing or PVM. I would also recommend bringing stamina potions and weight reducing gear like Boots of Lightness or uh, the Graceful Outfit if you want to slave away at like so many agility levels. And feel free to check out my 99 agility guide which actually goes over weight reducing gear and uh, how energy works, all that type of stuff. And looking at the last item essence pouches, there's four different kinds, one that holds 3, 6, 9, and 12. You can actually get them in the abyss by killing the leeches and whatnot. You have to start the abyss mini quest, which is very easy. It takes like two minutes. You want to go north of the Edgeville Bank into level five Wildy next to the river. You would then want to talk to Aubrey and Varrock, and yeah, you get it. It's super simple. You guys can do it. Moving on to a couple quests you should do for the XP actually in the early levels. And if you do all these quests, you're going to skip like 20 levels. You won't have to do air runes and all the early methods I will show you in a minute. But yeah, definitely do Eyes of Glorify, What Lies Below, Lunar Diplomacy, honestly they're all good. The Slug Menace actually unlocks the Proselyte Armor as well. And of course the Abyss Mini Quest which will actually get you to level 9. Alright, so before we jump into the guide, I actually want to cover this real quick. The Lunar Spellbook. I would highly suggest this for any skilling, especially um, magic, farming, and runecrafting. So this spellbook actually has the magic imbue at 82 which is really good magic training. You can cast it every like uh, 12 seconds or 10 seconds, I think it is. And it's basically like a free alk if you guys uh, wanna do that. It's a bit more costly. And you may actually want to have it to do Lava Ruins, which is about 70k XP plus an hour. And as well with the Lunar Spellbook, it has a ZMI Runecrafting Teleport. And along with that, the Lunar Spellbook actually has NPC contact at only 63 magic, which means you can contact the Dark Wizard in the Abyss to have him repair your pouches and you don't have to run there, etc. And then of course it has the Moon Clan Telly, which you will need for Astral Runecrafting. I'm also doing a colossal giveaway video, roughly 7 to 10 mil for every single 99 video. 
And yeah, of course, this one's going to be Amalized Crystals. I couldn't think of anything better, actually, because all the ruins, they had caps. I'd have to buy, like, five stacks of them. But yeah, feel free to enter the giveaway. Just be subscribed if you're not. Like the video and leave your RSN. I'll get back to you in a couple days. Alright, so from level 1 to 9, you're going to be wanting to do Air Runes. I would suggest teleporting to Fally either with, you know, just the basic spell book and like law runes, or you could actually buy tablets. It is going to be quicker than running back and forth. You could actually use regular essence, especially if you're an Iron Man, but the pure essence are twice as cheap. So, you know, you might as well go with that. Moving on to crafting earth runes at 9 to 14, it's going to take you about 5 minutes only and it's right next to Varrock, so you will want to bring a Varrock teleport, and again you can bring tablets to save like you know a little bit of inventory, tablets are about 500 GP and law runes are like 250. Alright, so moving on to fire runes, you're going to be wanting to do this till level 23. It is one of the quickest methods in game, especially if you're free to play. But you will most definitely want to bring dual rings because they can teleport to the actual uh, fire altar almost. It's like 10 steps away and then you can actually go to castle wars, which is the quickest bank in the game. Besides uh, Nana crafting bank, you know, the guilds, which I doubt, I doubt you have that. You could be getting 20k plus XP an hour and even more if you actually unlock, you know, higher tier pouches, which is really good for like level 14 and rune crafting is extremely slow. I believe it's actually the slowest skill in the game apart from farming, but farming is the quickest skill in the game because you actually just, you know, plant the things and you dip. You know, in theory with farming, you can only train for like five minutes doing herb runs or tree runs and then you actually have to go away, but each tree run is like 100k XP an hour. And I would highly suggest doing farm runs when you're training Slayer or Runecrafting. Gives you a little bit of break and you can make some extra gold. At level 23, you unlock Lava Runes, which is the best method all the way till 99. You can get up to 70k if you're really good. I'd say around like 60k if you're an average player. And of course, it does scale every time you get a new pouch. It is extremely costly, like the supplies are only dueling rings and binding necklaces, which are needed to actually, you know, formulate two types of ruins into one. And you will actually need magic imbue on top of that and lunars is needed which i uh, highly suggest doing the quest and unlocks so much and if you do the quest dream mentor you unlock about 10 more spells a nice thing about making combination runes as well is that the tick delay after you use the altar is a lot quicker if that makes sense like i can withdraw from the pouches instantly instead of if i'm doing you know nature runes or something i have to wait about a second or two i did this for about 20 hours one day and got all the way from like 60 to 77 and i did lava runes the whole time and one thing that actually messed me up here and there is not having all my dual rings and the binding necklaces at even charges like i would try and keep all of them you know four eight so they would degrade about the same time and you're going to be using two dueling ring charges for every one binding necklace as well also if you guys don't have a clan chat to go to check out sears it's filling up quite nicely we just did like a 20 man kbd mass and you know we do giveaways every you know couple days and stuff so check it out having a lot of fun there meeting a lot of people it's it's definitely a great time now this is a pretty cool way of training the zmi altar actually came out about a year ago and it's um it's my favorite way to train runecrafting there's actually no specific starting level like you could come any level you want i would recommend at least 44 maybe 54 runecrafting so you could do the nature rune and then the um, law rune because what this altar is it's actually a combination runes like i just take my pure essence and I get a, a majority of each ruin. You can make a lot of profit. And it's definitely interesting to see what you get from each inventory. Because it's you know completely different each time. But you're always going to profit pretty nice. You definitely don't have to. But I would highly recommend doing the Lunar's Quest. And being on the Lunar Spellbook. And having 71 magic. So you can actually teleport to Orania. And uh, you know this is going to save you a lot of time. Versus running back from the altar. If you do plan on doing the ZMI Altar, I would also recommend a Rune Pouch, but you could also use, um, what is it, a Mud Paddle Staff with Law Runes in inventory. And then uh, you guys will also have to pay the Banker in Ruins. It's 20 every single time. And I actually have Earth Ruins in my pouch, and then I just pay him with my Earth Ruins. You're also going to want to click on the wrench and go and fill up your bank. So when you actually do deposit the Ruins, they, they all go in and you don't deposit your rune pouches. So take out your, um, you know, your save slots of the pouches and it should be good.
maybe you're not after the most efficient runecrafting route, so you're definitely going to want to do nature runes at 44 all the way up to 77. Crafting nature runes is still good money, but it's not even close to what it was. I think gnats are peaking about 215 gold right now, which is very cheap. And with new updates like rev caves or even some of the new slayer bosses, there's so much more ways to make gold and different methods out there. You know, runecrafting is kind of boring and it's a little outdated, but it is still very relaxing and I enjoy it here and there. Doing gnats is roughly 20k XP an hour. I have seen as low as like 18k though if you're low level and you haven't unlocked any of the pouches. A little side tip as well, you know you may not be trying to go for max efficiency and whatever, but if you could speed up even your nature rune runs like by 10%, you'd be making 10% more gold, 10% more XP, maybe challenge someone around you, or actually try and race someone else. Sometimes I only have a couple hours after work and whatnot, and I feel really achieved at the end of the night once I've actually made you know some hardcore gains and I've been motivated, I wasn't kind of slacking or talking to people. Of course at level 91 you unlock the iconic double nature rune. And you know it is good money, but it's still not what it used to be guys. Feels bad. I would highly recommend using the Abyss, even for like Cosmic Runes, which I didn't put on this guide because it's not that good XP and not that good gold. But yeah, it's way quicker than running through Xanaris or even like Karamja where actually the Nature Rune Altar is located. But yeah, using the Abyss is way quicker than running to like the Karamja store. And then you have to run all the way back to the altar. Plus, there's some actual uh, tribesmen that can poison you for pretty high numbers. And I've seen many low levels get killed, especially on the demo mode servers. Alright, so moving on to some pretty good gold and XP blood runes at 77. You're going to be wanting to do this till 82. You'll actually have to venture onto the new Zaya Island. And once you get off the docks, you can basically just walk all the way north. And uh, yeah, you, you can basically just follow this map and see where to go. And if you do actually have fairy rings unlocked, there's a ring right next to the dark altar, which is pretty close to the um, you know blood rune altar and whatnot. So you could do it there. So doing blood runes and soul runes, which I'll cover in a minute, is the only way you can actually AFK during runecrafting. And it's good. It's like cutting a tree. It's almost two minutes. It's amazing money. 35k XP plus an hour. Really good. You will have to bring a pickaxe. Dragon is recommended, but of course you could use ruin. And I would also recommend bringing full graceful, which uh, can be found in my agility guide. Might as well plug that in. I have every 99 guide. If you found this one useful, definitely subscribe, leave a like, and check out the other videos. I put a lot of time into it. This is actually a short video. Some of the other ones are more in depth. If you are looking to train up your account, check it out. From level 82 to 90, you're going to be wanting to make double astral runes. And you could do it before, but once you get double astral runes, it becomes really efficient. You will have to unlock Lunar Island and actually do the quest Lunar Diplomacy, which I mentioned earlier. And you could do Dream Enter. I really suggest it takes like an hour. And you know, you, it's going to keep onto your account for a year plus. It's helped me out so much. And you can actually commune with, uh, with uh, what's it called, the Dark Mage and repair your pouch. Plus you could use it for Slayer and talk to your Slayer Masters with the, you know, communication spell at level 67 Mage. All unlocked from the Lunar Quest and Dream Enter. Alright, so the final method, 90 to 99, Soul Runes, 41k XP an hour. It's basically the same thing as the Blood Runes, you just run a different direction. And it's, it's amazing gold, obviously the best gold you could get. I mean, no one's really done it yet. I guess if you were like 95 runecrafting, you could mess around and try it out a little bit. But I think making nature runes is actually still better because each gnat is like 200 each and you can make two of them. But one rat rune is like 300, 320. So yeah. And there it is, the 1 to 99 runecrafting guide. Hopefully it did help you out. You guys learned some stuff. You found it enjoyable, learned some tips, helped you get some levels. You know, I don't know if you guys are actually coming back because of mobile. Maybe you're free to play or, you know, you're actually a member already just trying to get some skills up so you can do that quest, all that good stuff. And if you guys do want to help out the channel, feel free to check out Sears Village. has some awesome RuneScape merch. And, you know, some of you guys might actually be seeing this video a couple months after it's posted. So if you go to the site, I'm sure it's going to be looking way more like professional. I've actually just contacted one of the best artists, Volkaban, man. He's made all of Sir Pugger's thumbnails. So, yeah, feel free to check it out. Have a good one, guys. See ya.